This one's gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna have a huge blower on top of a Ford motor in our brand new Signature Series ride chassis. And we're putting some big 46s on this and some of the most ridiculous shocks we've ever put on a rock bouncer to date. This is the biggest that I've ever seen. This thing is an absolute monster. All in all, this thing should be 15, 1600 horsepower at a minimum. Over here. So you have to take this and get it to turn up and go all the way around and drop off into that spot right over there. Next, we have to get the winch mounted. So the winch is gonna mount. What's up everybody, this is Jake Berkey, and let me tell you, we have an awesome build that's sitting right behind me. This is gonna be the first for a many different reasons. First of all, as you can tell, these axles are ridiculous. We have these gigantic Meritor axles out here. They make a Dana 80 look like a little toothpick, but they've got chromoly housings and aluminum where it counts, and they actually weigh less than a Dana 80, which is crazy because these are seven ton rated and the Dana 80 is only one ton rated. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world do we need something bigger than a Dana 80? Well, this is gonna be no slouch. This thing has a ridiculous Ford motor going in it. Now, all you guys out there keep on watching our builds and you know, you're checking out all the LS motors and everything else. This one's gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna have a huge blower on top of a Ford motor in our brand new Signature Series ride chassis. So our ride chassis was really meant for you guys who are out there who just wanna go four wheeling and spend the weekend having a good time. You're not necessarily racing. You don't need something that's that strong. You want something that's middle of the ways where it's got a lot more room to it. So we decided to design something that can take that thrashing that you could expect from a rock bouncer, but also gives you the creature comforts that you would expect for something that you're gonna drive a long distance or longer periods of time. So. One of the biggest modifications is we got rid of the upper frame rail on this particular chassis. Now what that does is it gives you a ton of room to run full exhaust from front to rear. The exhaust has a beautiful spot right down through here that it can come down. This is gonna have boat sides on it, so it's gonna be a nice smooth transition going over the rocks. And because we've got rid of that front, uh, that upper frame rail, you've got tons more leg room. So with this chassis, if you're a larger fellow or something like that, you can really stretch out. It's got a ton of room in here so that you can have two seats side by side and you're not sitting here bumping shoulders. This chassis right here was really designed for the guy who wants to go out and spend some time in the woods. So we have a longer backpack here for a larger fuel cell, a cooler for some tools. It kind of brings us back to our roots, but at the same exact time, this thing's built with heavy duty materials. So we've got 250 wall tubing all throughout the bottom of the structure, 188 wall that holds everything else together, which is really strong stuff for you guys who are wanting to really beat your rig. So you're not making a sacrifice having a vehicle that's gonna be weak because we got rid of a frame rail or anything like that. We really beefed it up where it mattered and we gave you creature comforts that's really, really cool. So right now what we're doing is we're mocking up the steering. Now, there's not a lot of video starting this project off because I had actually got these axles for my personal project and then sold them to the customer. So it went from nothing to a chassis with axles in it in about a week period. Now, we're waiting on a custom set of, of wheels to go on this thing and we're putting some big 46s on this and some of the most ridiculous shocks we've ever put on a rock bouncer to date. So 
We're really concerned about wheel clearance and tire clearance and making sure that that doesn't hit the shocks. So we don't want to go too far until we get all the pieces to the puzzle here. So this bad boy right here is going to go from a chassis with axles and the four links sitting here ready to be mocked up to a full roller in about two weeks. So stay tuned. Hey, so we're about to start doing some filming and we need to know what we're going to call your buggy. We're thinking about calling it Goliath. I don't know. You got to name it already. Well, yeah, we're shooting the video. Uh, is there not a Goliath buggy out there? I don't know, but you got to shoot from the hip. There's definitely not. You're on camera right now. <laughs> he said, I don't know, man. We could name it. I don't know, man. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start off with Goliath. If you want to change it between now and then, we can change it. But uh, the first video is going to come out with it being called Goliath. All right, everybody, so this project is getting these massive 46-inch USD stickies on these custom wheels. They're double bead locks. This thing is a monster. Now, we've decided to call it Goliath. Now, the client's kind of like, I'm not sure if I want to call it Goliath, so it might change. But for right now, this is Goliath because it is getting this Ford motor with this gigantic Pro Charger up here in the front. Now, let me tell you. This Pro Charger is not your average size Pro Charger. It's actually only five inches smaller than the entire engine block in this motor to begin with. So basically you've got 20 inches of motor and you've got 15 inches of supercharger hanging out here in the front. So it's almost like having two motors bolted together. This is the biggest that I've ever seen. This thing is an absolute monster. It's got these huge inlets and outlets that we're gonna have to cut the chassis apart to make everything fit. It's a Ford motor. It started life as a 351. It's got a bunch of modifications done to it. All in all, this thing should be 15, 1600 horsepower at a minimum. Now, a lot of stuff that we've gotten done since the last time we talked is the shocks have been mounted all the way around. We've got our coil carriers and our bypasses that have all been mounted. We've taken them apart to do some final welding. We've got our trailing arms back here in the back. This thing's got a power glide transmission and an SCS transfer case to hold all those ponies and these seven ton Mer Meritor axles. So this is for all intents and purposes, a giant on big tires, big horsepower and Goliath is the perfect name. <laughs> So we got the seats mounted and these things are sweet. PRP Podium Elite seats. These are one of my favorite seats. They have a really nice bolster on the side so that it keeps the occupants nice and tight. And uh, sitting inside here is uh, a really nice thing because you've got plenty of room for feet. You've got plenty of room for your controls and you've got absolutely plenty of headroom that's gonna be up here. So I've got myself a good seating position and looking out, we've got plenty of visibility. Now the trick is gonna be trying to get all of the intake tubing to plumb from the supercharger over to the intake without being a problem with vision. The controls are gonna lay out nice and smooth, steering wheel right here, and I can already feel myself driving this buggy. So we got this buggy and we didn't have any possible way of knowing how to hold the Pro Charger in the correct spot to make sure that the Pro Charger was concentric with the crank. And that was a really big challenge for us because you've got this 85 pound hunk of metal right here and we're trying to dangle it up in the air to get it to where it's got the right, you know, projection on the crankshaft so we don't overload the side of the crankshaft. But we got it in there and we've got it installed and we're really confident on the way this thing is put together because we've got a mid plate on the front of the motor, basically a front plate. And then we have another plate that's right here on the Pro Charger that's made out of 3 8 thick mild steel. And then we use these big aluminum blocks to sandwich everything together and we milled them on the milling machine so that we know that the front plate of the motor and the front plate of the blower are directly in parallel with each other. So now that we have that done, we knew that we need to get the accessories put on, but there was no way that we could get a belt to go from the accessories down to the crankshaft. 
So we had to use the PTOs off of the back of the blower, which ended up meaning that the, the, all the accessories were gonna spin the wrong direction. So the blower has two different accessory PTO drives on the back. One turns clockwise, one turns counterclockwise. And the only way that we could get this thing to mount properly was to mount all of our accessories backwards and run it off a 1.2 overdrive PTO shaft. It was an extremely difficult process, but we got it done. So up here in the front, we got our bump stops mounted and these bump stops right here are gusted with these really cool brackets and these really cool pads. Uh, the customer wanted something that was really aggressive, so we decided to do a couple really sharp points on it to give it a little bit more attitude. Now, once we were done with the front, it was time to focus on the exhaust and get it all welded out so that we could get the interior started. We ended up with a full stainless steel back purge TIG welded kit that we built from scratch. So it's just a bunch of J-Bends and stuff, and we build our own headers from scratch. It comes from the exhaust manifold flange right here, drops down to a V-Band clamp, and then from there, it goes to three and a half inch exhaust through a muffler and then dumps out the back. As you can tell back here in the back, a whole lot of stuff has changed. Customer wanted something that was more aggressive, and we tried to take a couple bars out here and there and make it more aggressive, but it just wasn't flowing. So we wanted to make sure that we had something that would look really awesome, and I think we nailed it. Coming from down here, swooping up, coming back to the back with these nice points, giving a nice little kicker back here in the back, it sets off the whole entire buggy, makes it look way more aggressive and a whole lot more sleek. A rig of this quality deserves a high dollar sway bar. This thing right here is a pack inch and a quarter sway bar and it is mounted about halfway up on our trailing arms. The reason we do that is because if you mount a sway bar on the chassis and go down to the axle, you actually get a lot more of the wheel travel onto the sway bar and you have a higher potential of breaking the sway bar. So we go with a heavier sway bar and then put it on the trailing arm so the sway bar doesn't have as much movement and it keeps it from breaking. Now that we got all that stuff done in the back, we got the brakes mounted on the transfer case. So we have a brake in the front and in the rear because the axle shafts are going to be spinning a lot faster because of the gear reduction on the planetaries. And we knew that the brakes were gonna spin really fast so we wanted to go with a dual brake package off the transfer case. Now that we have all that done and the exhaust is done, it's time to finish up the sheet metal. So there's always a lot of late nights here at the shop and tonight I'm working extra late to get these floor pans knocked out because we got a few other things that are going to, you know, basically depend on these being done. And what I wanted to show you is just how I build these things. So first and foremost, I wanted to make sure I had my, my firewall in here. So this is basically the first panel that you put in. It hangs off of a couple tabs uh, on the backhand side. You can see they are sitting right here. They're threaded, so you don't have to worry about putting a nut on the back side. You can get those right from our web store, bustanuckleoffroad.com. And then basically those bolt in there, 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 and it hangs this first panel. And that's your firewall panel that also keeps, you know, any type of engine bay explosion if you had a fire or anything like that from coming inside the cockpit. Number two, um, this panel comes around and there's a flange that is coming off of this piece that's behind this panel right here. And you've got a couple different nut certs that are on the back side of that that screw in and if you needed to get to any of your electronics or the back side of the transmission or anything up there on the top basically all you have to do is take off these bolts right here and this side panel comes right off and you can get right down into the top of the transmission so if you wanted to take the transfer case off or something like that there's a really nice access and basically now that i have this nice little floor area right here the last part of the puzzle is this piece right here now this piece sets in 
and you can see that it just kind of sits on those ledges right there that I created. This is 090 aluminum, and that's strong enough for a person to stand on, no problem. Uh, and it's just basically got some flat pieces down here that are press broke over. And uh, you know, we use a Bailey magnetic press brake, makes the stuff go real smooth and real easy. Nut certs all the way around, and basically all you do is just bolt that panel in right there, and you've got a really slick looking passenger side. The last thing that we've got is this little window right here that you can see I've got open for these two fittings. Now, I've ordered some uh, some 90 degree fittings to go in here and this is just a placeholder, but what I did was I just cut a little box. Once I put my 90 degree fittings, I'll close that box until it's as far up as it possibly can go. And then I'll put a little filler pieces in there and take it up real nice and neat. But that gives you a nice little spot to put your fittings and everything coming off the side of the transmission for your transmission cooler but um yeah there's tons of late nights like this just getting the floor pan knocked out a lot of stuff that people don't see that are behind the scenes is just how much work goes into these things and i'm telling you what that right there is about two to three days worth of work just getting all that stuff knocked out and uh, i think it came out really really good so we're getting a few more things done to this buggy i wanted to show you right here we got our pedal for the gas and it is beautifully nestled in right to that little spot right there. Originally this pedal was actually cocked over and we had to cut the base off and turn it and then TIG weld it back together so it has a nice good smooth motion and doesn't hit right here which right on the back side of that panel is where the transmission's at. Yeah, it's a really cool pedal you can get it through us busknuckleoffroad.com and then right here I've got my brakes going in and I wanted to make sure I had plenty of pedal throw and that the pedals were fairly even. So I ended up building um, all this out of one piece here and then I press broke this down so that I'll be able to build a little doghouse back here for the pedal to swing into so that your foot is basically going to be flush with the panel here when you're fully on the brakes and it'll give this back part of the arm somewhere to go. So. Back here, a little press brake. We're gonna come across this back side about where my hand is and kick it back over. I've got my uh, temporary Willwood master cylinders here that uh, aren't gonna get burnt up and get destroyed with me welding all the stuff up. And uh, yeah, it's coming together. So as you can see right here, I've got the computer mounted and we've got the cable tray, which is gonna be down through here. And what that does, is it holds all of our wiring and plumbing and holds it up off the hot transmission and makes everything nice and clean and it goes all the way down through this little passageway. And if you need to get to anything, all you have to do is take off the center console and when you look down, you'll be able to see all of your stuff sitting right there. Water pump's going right there. Got our transmission cooler right there. So it's pulling cool air over the top of the water pump, keeping it nice and cool on those hot days and everything else. A fuel pump will go in the same spot. So again, it's pulling cool air over the top of the fuel pump. And then all of your wiring and plumbing goes right down through there and right up to the engine. So this buggy is gonna get topped off with all Holly products. We're gonna use the Holly ECU. We're gonna use the Holly dashboard. We're gonna use the Holly ignition box. We're gonna use basically everything from Holly so it's a match system. This is where the computer's going right here. And then right here, if you can picture this thing, it's gonna start off right here with a bar. We're gonna go up, over. Our orbital valve is gonna sit right here. It's gonna cut sideways and there's gonna be a big screen right here the holly efi digital screen that goes right here it's going to continue over drop down land right here i'm going to have another bar that comes off of here cuts up goes over to the other side and back down i'm going to french all that in with sheet metal french all this in with sheet metal and actually recess that holly dash inside of the aluminum i think when it's all said and done it's going to be really cool So the next stage of the build is laying out all of the plumbing and wiring and getting the dash put together and putting the pro charger pipes and stuff like that on. So as you can see behind me, we've got the charge pipe completely installed with this gigantic blow off valve because this, this supercharger is gonna put a whole lot of pressure. So 
We have to make sure we have a really big pro charger charge pipe. This thing is actually four inches in diameter, goes straight into the intake over here, and we're gonna be running a water methanol inlet on this thing to try to keep the intake temperatures down. So this is our four and a half inch inlet pipe, and this is gonna start off right here in the front of the pro charger and wrap all the way around to a custom air box that we're gonna make off in this corner over here. So we have to take this and get it to turn up and go all the way around and drop off into that spot right over there. Next, we have to get the winch mounted. So the winch is gonna mount right here in the front, just about like this right here. So we gotta build some brackets to make that sit right there with that intake pipe going around that side. We've done a whole lot of plumbing, a whole lot of wiring. Uh, we've got the inlet all situated. We've got some of the stuff done on the fuel system. We've got the water pump mounted. We've got the fuel cell mounted. We've got the fuel pump mounted. Uh, a whole lot of systems are all done and we're on to dashboard. So we've got a pretty good rough draft. Let's take a look. So we have a rough draft on our dashboard right here and you can see we decided to go with some rolled tubing just to give it kind of a modern look inside the cockpit and it basically rolls from right over here to over here with some steel tubing and then from there over to there with some steel tubing and that's my personal favorite look because I think it looks really aggressive and gives kind of a accent color to the dashboard so it's not all bland like one color. Now this Holly EFI dashboard right here is actually gonna be all the gauges and give the ability to change the tunes on the fly. So if he decides that he wants to go out, we'll be able to throw him a 93 octane tune. Uh, it'll pull some of the timing out and he should be able to drive it and just go play. If he decides that he wants to get wild with it, flip over to the performance tune and throw in some uh, 116 octane and he should be able to rock out pretty hard. So as you can see right down in this area, we made it really busy. And the reason is we wanted to get as much weight back on the vehicle as possible because we got a big old pro charger up there in the front. And if we didn't put a bunch of weight back, we'd have a nose heavy rig. So we're trying to stuff as much stuff back here in the back as possible. We got our fuel pump, we got our rear steer box, we got our transmission cooler, we got our uh, water pump over there. All this stuff is trying to balance out the rig and make it to where it has really good suspension performance. So up here we've got our Podium Elites from PRP, uh, super nice seat. And uh, one of the last things that we've got to do up here in the in interior is actually install our harnesses. So we've got our harnesses sitting over here on the table and we are going to fix those up tomorrow and get all that stuff situated. Um, you might be wondering if you're watching the video where our engine cage and roof cage are, but we are saving that for last because uh, welding on top of all these panels ends up being kind of an issue. So instead of getting out fire blankets and doing all that stuff, we'll mock up a couple bars up there on the top and uh, weld them out final at the last minute. Um, the engine cage, same deal. You know, we, we don't want to throw a whole bunch of sparks on top of this engine. And because we couldn't really fabricate the engine cage until we knew where everything was going to sit, we ended up having to do a custom deal at the end. And what we're going to do is just basically bend a couple bars. We're going to tack them once. Everything will be tacked in. We'll remove all of the engine and then go back in and do our final welding so that we keep this pretty motor right here nice and clean. So I want to show you all something. I've got the camera sitting right by my head and sitting right here in the cockpit. I've got plenty of headroom and I can see out of this buggy really, really well. We basically made sure that we put all of the accessories over here on the passenger side so that we would have just a very good line of sight from everything in front of us. I mean, that bench that's sitting right there, I can see three, like I can see basically right over here where the coilovers and stuff are at. And that bench, I can see all the way down, about halfway down that thing. And it's only four foot, maybe three foot in front of the buggy. Um, so you've got tons of visibility, even though we've got these tall shock hoops, you just kind of look through the bars and you can see extremely well. Um, over here on that side, basically the tire, if you look real close, the tire sits right here on this side. You can kind of see some lugs back off in here and it basically wraps all the way around. So this whole section that's right in here, you wouldn't be able to see anything anyways. So we just threw all the accessories, basically this big intake right here, 
and that carb hat are the only things that are kind of in the way from your visibility. So sitting in the cockpit of this thing is really cool because with your hand on the steering wheel, you've got your gauges sitting right here and tons of visibility out in front of you. And these big old tires right here are spinning a million miles an hour and it chunks a rock off of that scoop right there. Wham, right there in the scatter guard. All right, so it's day two of the tear down on this buggy and we've got a whole bunch of cool stuff going on. I wanna show you guys the axles. This is what we're working with. This is a Meritor axle that's all chromoly. It's got third member dropout, so it's like Think of it as like a Ford nine inch, but um, ridiculously big. So it's got a dropout center section right here with some ribs and stuff, all chromoly. And then you've got these gigantic kingpins. Like, look at that. That kingpin is two inches in diameter for just the piece that comes into the kingpin. So like the stud, like the male part is two inches in diameter. And think about like a normal kingpin on a Dana 60. It's, it's tiny compared to this. So they're super, super beef. Um, but this is what they look like out of the vehicle, out of the buggy. Really, really cool. And then this is the pallet full of parts that we're tearing down for the front axle. So let's zoom over to here where we have our buggy and we've got the axles and the wheels and the tires and everything else separated. We've got the rear axle over here. We're just going over a handful of welds and getting some stuff situated on that. But uh, that's the rear axle. We got the trailing arms, drive shaft and all that stuff sitting out. And tomorrow we'll finish out pulling the rest of the four links and we'll pull out the drive shafts. So we've got a really clean engine cage. It's gonna be really basic. Just have a couple kickers that come down from this main area right here and drop down into the chassis. Uh, we're gonna do that on both sides. And then we're gonna have another bar right about here that drops down onto the chassis down here. And then we're gonna have a couple little kickers that come over and that's gonna be the end of it. We're wanting to keep this nice and clean. Um, we wanna have a huge engine sitting inside here with not a lot of tubing. So it, um, you've got a lot of visibility. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of cool seeing this thing come together because it's got a really cool look to it. Uh, the roof, you can see where we started to get everything situated where we're gonna lay out the tubes and stuff on the roof. That's gonna be pretty cool. And the interior, we've talked about it before, but that is slick as it can be. Day two of the teardown. A couple more days and this thing will be ready for powder coat. I am proud to report we have had a ton of success on this buggy in the last couple days. We have the axles out. We've got the supercharger pulled apart. We've got the other parts of the axles. These are third member dropouts. We've got all the intake and, and pressure tubing sitting over here, the drive shafts, fuel cell, all the panels, trailing arms, parts for the steering. These are the aluminum pieces that go to the axle for the gear reduction, which is pretty slick. And all this is going to powder coat. We like to lay everything out so we can see exactly what we're doing. And then right over here, we are pulling the engine today. So it's like a pivotal moment in this project because that means it's nothing but steel after this. We gotta go through, finish up some welds, finalize a handful of things, just clean up some spots here and there on the chassis, make sure that everything gets welded out completely. A lot of the welding we save uh, for the last stage of the build. So basically we'll weld stuff on the top and then we flip the engine and everything, pull, I mean, pull the engine out, then we flip the chassis upside down. And when, whenever we do that, we can get a better weld because we can weld all the way around the tubing. So we do save a lot of the welding for the last minute. But as you can see right now, the engine is coming out. We got everything palletized, it's off to the powder coater for this load right here. And in a couple days, we'll have this thing done and ready to get put back together.
This is the last piece of the puzzle going to Pyroco, and the next time you see it, it'll be all pretty.